cool that um, Blow did not um, yield. He just he just stayed there. He didn't go toward the ball or go back. So it will be a penalty on, on uh, Robert Blow. Blow can't believe it. He beat he actually beat Richardson to the spot, but the thing he didn't do was put his hand via in motion across the formation. Blows on him man to man. James play action rolls to the right, and there's just nothing there as things collapse all around him. On the play, Warren Johnson pretty much knocked Rob James out of the play, along with Peter Kwiatkowski and number 43, Lance Sellers. Here we see it again. Good pressure again by the front four. You see a blitz coming up the middle. James did get outside, but he's going to the short side of the field. And Lance Sellers forced him out of bounds finally. LaRue and Villa wide to the left this time, split backs. James looking to the left. He's going to throw deep. Lofts it up for LaRue. It's a man to man rebound time. And both players go up for the ball. And a good play that time by Kevin LaRue as he really played the man and got away with it. LaRue was a defensive man that time. And Ralph Gooding. Ralph Gooding was the offensive. They both went up for the ball. Gooding had a better angle on it than did LaRue. As you'll see here, he'll throw it long to the left side. It's a fly pattern down the left sideline. And that, you know, it was almost Gooding could have come up with the ball. And LaRue did a good job to break it up. One thing LaRue did is he looked like he was slapping at the ball. But I think in his mind, he was slapping at Gooding because Gooding did have the inside track. Nevertheless, third down in a long yardage play, 16 yards to go for the Eagles. 7.05, and they're not wasting much time with these incomplete passes and out-of-bounds plays. Vernon Williams tries the right side, so the Eagles play it conservatively, and they'll have to punt here as it'll be fourth down and 11, and the Boise State crowd's starting to get behind their team. Now this is Garrick Redden will come right up the middle on the safety blitz, and they bring the linebackers to, and Cordes just comes up on the tip ball, and oh. That uh, left knee got buckled under as he was tackled. Looked like he might have just just banged it on the turf, and that's that's better news than actually actually twisting or tearing something. And this field is a lot softer than it used to be. It used to be as bad it is as as in Pullman, as almost a piece of uh, of hazard turf on top of concrete. They got an extra padding underneath a couple years ago, so it is a softer field, but still playing on astroturf isn't as good on the body as it is playing on grass. Definitely not. It's it's a hard field and. You can jam those joints like that. Cordes and it looks is like he's up. getting up. Mark Cordes, the man of the day. It's like his knee's pretty, pretty loose there. Now with 441 as they take Cordes off, that's not a good sign for Eastern fans. But with 441, I would not um, think that they would throw any outs toward the sidelines. If they do throw the ball, they'll probably throw like screens and a little stuff like that. I would look to. Uh, Dominic Core in the backfield to do some, excuse me, Vernon Williams to do some running. There he goes off the right side, breaks a tackle, and he's out to about the 43 yard line. So Vernon Williams, and then he goes out of bounds. Goes out so of bounds. That's probably yeah. well, not the best thing he could do. That's a good play to call, but unfortunately, Vernon Williams just got pushed out of bounds and he couldn't get out of the defense, defenseman's grab. So the clock is stopped, 436 to go. The trainer's still attending to Mark Cordes, but Cordes has to make him feel a little better that he's pretty much been the hero of the game for the Eagles. Five interceptions today, a school record. And now the Eagles have it second down and six yards to go after the four yard gain by Williams via in motion toward the formation. Williams again tries the right side and out of bounds he goes again. So you got to wonder about that going to the outside, the Eagles when they now have that, a chance to run the clock down. That really puzzles me because they got a two-point lead. Their defense has been playing well. Mark Cordes is having a career today with five interceptions, and they run the ball out of bounds. Now they're getting good yardage. It's third and about five yards, four third yards about to four go. or five, but they don't have the clock running. They've only taken about 30, 35 seconds off the clock on this series of downs so far, and it's third down at the Boise State stops. And here, Boise State's got a good four minutes to try to put up put some points on the board with a drive. And Vernon Williams has gone out of the game and Corky Flock in to replace him at tailback. tailback. Flock actually is a, a fullback. As we go into the pass, James tries the out and he hits Richardson for the first down at the 45 yard line. And, we got an and now we got a late flag. Late hit on, um, on um, James, I think. 
personal foul, roughing, roughing the, the passer. passer. So they will, I will they attack that they'll on. attack that on, so that'll put Eastern down at the 30-yard line and possibility to get a field goal here and force Boise State to go all the way for a touchdown. So before we get ahead of ourselves, so the ball <laughs> will end up. Richardson caught the pass for the first down at the 45-yard line, and it looks like the roughing the passer will be tacked onto that. Nope, they're going to take it back from the point take of infraction. Take it back from the penalty, that, uh, but that the, will actually put it at the ahead. Probably, let's see, I'll probably put it at the 40 rather than having the ball at the 45. With the 15-yard penalty, the, the line of scrimmage was the 45. 10 yards, and it's a 15-yard penalty, so the, the Eagles gain 5 yards and negates the Richardson catch, but still the Eagles down at the 40-yard line. 4.23 to go. The time seems to just be standing still. <laughs> For Boise State. We've played three Eagles. hours and 15 minutes, and we still have four minutes left in the ball game. So this has been a long game here today. Corky Flock stays in the game at fullback. He made a nice block on the play, the last play. Vernon Williams back in at tailback. James over center. Man to man on the outside. Quick toss. It goes to Williams. He cuts up the field. Nice, nice move. move. Good balance shown, and he's down to the 30. He's going to go all the way. Five, touchdown! That'll do it. Vernon Williams, possibly the best play of the game. Looked like he was down about three times. Took it into the end zone. He would not be denied that time, Irv. Great, great an individual effort on Vernon Williams. He'll take a pitch. Good block there by Flock, and he'll just take it himself. That's that, He should have gone down there. Two. Should have gone down there. Three. And he just runs out 21 to the goal line. Four tackles he broke. Two would have taken down any other runner as Vernon Williams goes 40 yards and puts this game out of reach. Eastern chance to go up by nine with the extra point here. Now he'll take two scores after the extra point for Boise State to take the lead. And the people back in Boise are probably not liking what they're seeing on live <laughs> television here today. The kick is good. And so that makes the score, as you said, 21 to 12. The Eastern Eagles get a big play from Vernon Williams after, well, Mark Cordes with the big interception. Mark set Cordes, the whole thing up. And that's the first points the offense has put on the boards here today. Um, uh, kick return run back by Richardson. I believe it was uh, Faker on Faker the block kick. On return. the block kick ran that back 56 yards. So the first offensive um, effort shown here by the Eagles, and the offense has been kind of slow, but they get it going here late and put the game away with 3:52 left to go. They got a nine-point lead now. So 3:52 remains on the clock. And Moran will test his onside kick abilities. Squibs it through, goes for the long one. Richardson has to has to cover it. And he does down at the four. Not after a few anxious moments on the sidelines. I think Dick Zorn has just <laughs> aged about five years right now. <laughs> Greg Richardson making it interesting. And now the Eagles are slammed way back in their own territory. 304 still on the clock. On that drive, three plays, 79 yards. There you see Richardson has it right off his pad. And in the offensive drive for Boise State, 79 yards, three plays, 48 seconds, a 20-yard touchdown pass from Alcalde to Andrade with Moran with the extra point. The, so biggest, the biggest play was, was Harrison, the 43-yard pickup on the screen pass. Eagles in the I formation. Vernon Williams, Corky Flock in the backfield. The blitz is on. There's Vernon Williams, dives forward for about two yards to the six. And the time will continue to run because Boise State without a timeout. Now you'll see Vernon Williams will keep both hands on the ball and Boise State players will be clawing at that ball like anything to try to get a fumble right here because if Eastern gets one first, gets a first, can get a first down here on the ground as they will not pass the ball, they can run out the clock and win this ball game. But we have seen stranger things happen. If the Eagles don't hurry up right here, they could lose five yards. Single setback now as Corky Flock is out to the left. James to throw. Throws it inside. Villa has it at the 23-yard line. What a gutsy call by the Eagles. And it comes through as Villa with, I believe, his first reception of the game. That is, that is a lot of guts from the Eastern's uh, uh, coaching staff to pass the ball when they're on their own six-yard line. A good pass from Rod James. Rifles it in there to Got Villa. Villa in single coverage. Beats his man against number three, 
Blow. That is Robert Blow, and Blow's been beat pretty consistently the whole day here by the Eastern receivers, and Eastern's really has got a fine set of receivers. That's got to be probably the strength of the team along with the running backs and the defense. So a little breathing room now for the Eagles as there's under two minutes to go. James looking at the blitz, throws to Poffinroth and nearly, nearly beaten to the ball is Poffinroth by Robert Blow. So the Eagles trying to make things interesting here, not really running much time off the clock right there, 149 to go now. Dick Zorn's not happy with quarterback Rob James and I cannot blame him. I don't see why they're throwing He the, audibilized he into that play. He called that play himself. He went to the well again and that's, he's gonna get a couple lashings with a wet noodle <laughs> and get in the locker room for that. He's making Dick Zorn's hair gray a little bit faster. I think we're, we can safely say we'll see a running play right here. 149 to go. James, the long count. Toss to Vernon Williams. Cuts it outside, nothing there. The clock will continue to run. That'll bring up third down and about 14 yards now for the Boise Eastern Eagles. Boise State will probably get the ball with about 40 to 30 to 40 seconds left if there's no penalties or any out of bounds or incompletes here. I'd be very surprised if Eastern, if Rob James throws the ball here, I would uh, like to encourage everybody to join his funeral as I'm sure Dick Zorns <laughs> will be after his head. Poffenroth comes in, Via goes out. Down close to a minute to play here. Close to a delay of game for the Eagles also. James gets the playoff in time, hands to Williams. He's Williams room. has some room, one man to get around, and he's got the first down yardage up to the 38. That'll do it for the fourth time. <laughs> Vernon Williams comes up with a big run, some great blocks being thrown there, and he's pretty excited about the whole situation. Vernon Williams doing himself very well today. The opportunity with Jamie Townsend going out with a a small knee injury, and Vernon just takes it on his own, and he is having a really great second half, great cuts, a really quick runner, a Kurt Warner type where he darts in and out, and he's got great outside speed also. So Vernon Williams and Mark Cordes, the men of the day so far. For the Eagles, we say so far because things have changed rather <laughs> quickly. Now the Eagles will just sit on the ball two plays, and this one will go in the W column. Think they'll pass? No. <laughs> nope, no pass there. James steps back. And the time begins to run. There was 50 seconds at the beginning of the play. So the Eagles will have to want run one more play as the crowd figures this one's in the can and they start to file for the exits. Now this game, when people read it in the paper, Eastern beat a good Boise State team 21-19. They'll go up in the rankings. And this will give Eastern some confidence. They didn't play well offensively. They really didn't execute until here in the fourth quarter. Defensively, they played great. Mark Cordes, five interceptions. The defense did not allow them to get in the end zone until the fourth quarter. Boise State had numerous chances throughout the game and they just couldn't capitalize. So that'll just about do it. Boise State throwing a little cheap shot down there. Number 43, Lance Sellers, a little frustrated. The Boise State crowd will have a long ride back to Boise as the Eastern Eagles win this one as time runs out 21 to 19. And you gotta believe this is a big win for the Eastern Eagles and the confidence of Rob James and also the confidence of people in the Spokane area. Well, this really has got to help out Eastern football. They come out, uh, 5,500 people come out two weeks before school starts, and you keep on winning ball games, and more people are going to come out to the stadium watch them. Now they have five more home games. This is the first year for Eastern to have more home games and road games, and the first year they have an 11-game schedule. So they got the opportunity to really promote Eastern football here in the Eastern Washington area. So that's, that's the score, 21-19 next week for the Eastern Eagles. They travel down to Flagstaff and they'll take on Northern Arizona University Lumberjacks. Then we'll be back up here the week after that to take on University of British Columbia. So you want to be 